Well, I got the car back from Wysak Porsche and um, yeah, they bled the brakes and they fiddled with the steering and um, they got some great German mechanics. So basically, um, sorry, the garbage truck is coming down the lane here. Anyway, they pulled the rack in and out a few times and um, played with the pinion, um, the preload on it, as well as the vertical. I have a vertical brass spacer machined that holds the pinion from pushing up too much. And anyway, he ended up, uh, the mechanic there, ended up taking a couple of thou more, just to give it a little bit more play so it doesn't bind at any movement. Uh, we tried a different rack. We tried the uh, me, me, is it Mille, M-E-Y-L-E -E rack. And um, that rack uh, was too, too loose and it was a stock ratio rack and we're way better off having it uh, with the performance rack, I think. So I'm getting used to it. Um, put a 10K resistor in series with the inductive crank sensor. And then I um, improved the uh, shielding all the way to the sensor. I, had a, I have a weather pack connector and I wasn't uh, bridging across the connector with the shield. Um, so now that's all bridged across and even the connector itself has got uh, metal uh, aluminum wrap and tape around it. So anyway, it seems to, I've just tested it right now, it revved up to 8,000 RPM. So that's, uh, I'm gonna get my neighbor Bruce to go out for a drive with me and we'll videotape it and we'll see if I can get it above six grand. The engine's never been programmed up there so could burp and fart and not like it up there but it uh, hopefully it'll rev above six grand without massive amount of complaining that's about it for now oh the other thing is uh, this electric water pump uh, controller is sensing the temperature leaving the radiator which is always cold but the cylinder head gets quite hot and it can get to above 220 230 degrees Fahrenheit and start puking out my overflow thing here so I'm going to set the temperature of that down as far as I can for now, but I'm going to move that sensor from the return line up to the cylinder head. Uh, just because um, it got too much radiator, this radiator is cooling the fluid too much. Um, it's a big fucking radiator and uh, I knew that might be a problem. I can block it off with some uh, plates in the front if I need to, but I'm just going to try moving the sensor around. Worst case is I ditch this controller and run everything off the Holly ECU. So I don't have, because this controller's got a mind of its own and I may want to, may want to, you know, do my own programming and, uh, you know, not have the engine get hot when the radiator's cold. It's very strange the way it's behaving. Anyway, we'll go for a ride in a sec. It's an interesting sound, isn't it, Bruce? It's it's, it's sort of yeah. a it's a weird sound. It's not a normal. It's, it's it's not it's not what I expected for sure. And it's it's weird. It's like yeah. a brass band playing. Yeah. It's like wow. It's yeah. it's sort of serious sounding. It's right? actually pretty close to music. <laughs> it's really. right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So I'm just trying to show you the brakes. They're absolutely superb. So yeah, it's like they're they're good. I'm uh, I'm happy. And the transient response when turning the wheel, it's absolutely the car is flat. It feels really feels it feels really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Well, I gotta get uh, this thing with the DOT approved glass in it, and that's fine. But uh, I'm able to bomb around and do a lot of, you know, this type of stuff right now, and it's absolutely beautiful. This thing, uh, it's a very rough road. I'm tossing myself around here, but I'm trying to get away from cars. And uh, hugely responsive engine responsive brakes uh, this thing's a, an absolute go-kart it's not that loud except when you get on the throttle about 5,000 rpm it's like really noisy but uh, in a really nice way so yeah I'm not uh, I'm not complaining at all about this this is this is pretty good sorry I have to shift with one hand and drive it's a little tricky sound eh? Holy! It's something else. Um, yeah, so I'm super super happy with this thing. Um, I'm gonna make lots of little changes but uh, that's what the process is all about. Tweak, tweak, tweak. But uh, yeah, now we got the steering uh, rack sorted out and uh, the brakes bled and sorted and broken in a little bit. And uh, these are really grippy uh, Dereza 2 tires on the 185 6014 rims. It's a huge stick for the old uh, small tire patch. It's uh, remarkable. And um, you know, if I put the catalytic converter on, this thing will get a lot quieter. And I'm going to try that at some point. It'll be nice uh, road manners. Won't smell quite as much uh, either. You know, you get a little bit of, even though I'm running, uh, you know, 15 to 1, 14.8 to 1. Uh, you know, you still get a little bit of that smell of fuel that, that, that'll go away with the cat converter in it. And, um, you know, all I can say is, I like, I'm super happy that I had the mechanics sort of, you know, these are the pros, uh, you know, completely go over it and uh, say, yeah, this thing's solid, this thing works. And um, now it's up to me to get it properly licensed and then do some performance benchmarking. I think I'm going to keep the springs that are in it. I don't even think I'm going to put a front sway bar on it because, um, you know, I've got that Autotech uh, hollow rear bar, really nice. And um, <coughs> anyway, <coughs> I still got the stupid cold, but basically stiff front springs and the racing uh, struts um, aren't that punishing. And uh, they keep the car nice and flat. And um, I'm not getting any water roll basically at all. So, love to take this out on the track at some point. Maybe not until next spring. We'll have to see. Maybe I'll drive it down to the southern states to, to put it on the track in the winter time. Who knows? Um, something to think about. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty uh, pretty amazed that I can get away with it. Here, here's the other thing, by the way. I'm gonna just drop it in. So there's 1500 RPM. It's, you know, this is an engine that wants to see 8,500 and it'll pull away nicely from, you know, 1,500 RPM onward. So I'm in fourth gear right now at, uh, you know, less than 30 miles an hour and I'm at 1,600 RPM or whatever it is. And uh, it's just nice. It's, it's not, uh, it doesn't bog at all. It doesn't fart, doesn't uh, ping. Um, remember, this is a 12 to 1 motor, so I'm getting away with murder basically with this uh, the way it's set up here. And um, what's nice, as I said, is you don't end up with that ITBs causing this thing to be really, really sensitive off idle. It actually feels damn good 
off idle and uh, a little bit of finessing a little bit of getting used to it and uh, yeah you can be very smooth so you might gotta shift with the other hand um, so there's a stop light up ahead here and after the stop light I can give it one last uh, one last gun and uh, then I'll call it an evening and uh, this car will not be back on the road again for some time so it'll uh so there's so I'm just gonna slow down here and get I got a red light and then I can I can go so I'll walk it out of the hole in first gear and then I will uh, give it a little bit of gas in second gear. I'm still not going to give it full throttle, and I'm still not going to go full RPM. But uh, so shift into second, and then now. That feels pretty good, eh? So there we go. That was all she wrote. And I'll see you guys later. Um, just a few things. So I'm looking at uh, uh, the amount of uh, fuel consumption and um, I really didn't take this thing up past uh, 7500 RPM in terms of like full throttle. Um, I blipped it past 8 grand but uh, just to test the uh, crank sensor. But um, at 7250 which is the last time I had my foot 100% into it, it was consuming 105 pounds of fuel per horsepower hour at wide open throttle. In this car, um, this is producing, um, it's a very efficient engine design, so the brake specific fuel consumption is probably around 0.42 anyway, so it's around 240 to 250 horsepower, so that's right on spec. And uh, if, you, if you go into um, the uh, volumetric efficiency uh, you know, we're above 110, 115% uh, and up towards uh, higher numbers. Um, so like you're getting to that where the cam and the ITB and the exhaust system is all tuned to. So you're pushing in a few spots literally 120% and a few other spots at 115. Um, you know, this is not necessarily um, the truth. This is what the uh, software parameters are, <coughs> excuse me, the data loggers saying, but um, you know, this is all within sort of the design spec of the engine, what we were trying to do. Um, so, um, I mean, it certainly feels like it's coming on strong. Now, the question is, will it continue producing more power above the 7,500 RPM? And, um, you know, some engine builders are critical of this engine in terms of being able to rev it because it's got the, um, the stroker crank, the 95.5 millimeter crank in it, and that's uh, a lot to, to rev the piss out of. Um, this your rod you know, crank, uh, you know, your, your, the ratio, the, the, the angle as the rod goes around, it has to, it has to kind of bend a lot. Um, so we may find this thing uh, at its horsepower peak below 8,000, but uh, still it's within its d design parameters. And the thing we really like about this motor is, you know, put your foot into it at 1500 RPM, coming off the line in second or third gear, and it just pulls nicely, doesn't ping. It, uh, you know, the, the cams bleed off some compression. So thing is 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 doing its bit so really really happy <laughs>